بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إله العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على خاتم الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين we thank Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal for having gathered us here once again. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to surround us with the malaika and to cause his mercy and his sakinah to descend upon us and to raise us with the anbiya alayhimu salatu wa salam and those whom he has mentioned with them. Ameen. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, he commanded the angels to prostrate to Adam alayhi salatu wassalam. And the angels did so. With the exception of Iblis, he refused to prostrate to Adam alayhi salatu wassalam. So Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal says, قَالَ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَلَّا تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهِ خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٌ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, Why is it that you have not prostrated? What is it that prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you to do so? So Iblis said that I am better than him. I am made from fire. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. So why should I prostrate to this creature that you have created from clay? I'm better than him. So you see, Iblis had this arrogance within him that displayed out when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to do so. He did not look when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded him to do something, he didn't look at the fact that Allah created me and Allah created this creature. So the fact that he is commanding me to prostrate means I should prostrate and submit immediately. But he thought to himself, I'm better than him. Allah created me from fire and he created him from clay. So he used the intellect that Allah gave him to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he felt jealous of Adam alayhi salatu wassalam. What is so special about this creation? He's created from clay. Why should I prostrate to him? He didn't think of who was commanding him to do so. All he saw was this creature is being created and it caused him to feel jealous within his heart of Adam alayhi salatu wassalam. To the extent that in one ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala a'asjudu liman khalaqta tina. He said to Allah that should I prostrate to the one whom you created from clay? I won't do so. There's no reason for me to do so. And this turned him against entire humanity until the day of Qiyamah. To the extent that he is our enemy today. إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ فَاتَّخِذُهُ عَدُوًا Indeed, shaytan is your enemy, so take him as your enemy. You see, he is our enemy until today, trying to take us to the fire until today. Why? Simply because he was jealous. A feeling, an emotion that he felt within him. And this is the danger of jealousy. It can cause us to do that which is extremely bad to the extent that we will harm not only the person but their progeny as well and the people that come after them as well. We for that feeling that we feel within our hearts, that burning sensation that you get when you see another human being doing well is actually what causes a person to do wrong to another person. You see in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us of the two sons of Adam. The two sons of Adam. 
واتل عليهم نبأ ابني آدم بالحق إذ قربا قربانا فتقبل من أحدهما ولم يتقبل من الآخر قال لأقتلنك and recite upon them the news of the two sons of Adam with the truth when they both offered a sacrifice one of their sacrifices was accepted and the other his sacrifice was not accepted so he said to his brother i will kill you i will kill you now this is something that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose not something that the, the brother whose sacrifice was accepted chose and said, I want my sacrifice to be accepted. No, Allah chose to accept the sacrifice of one and reject the other. But the result, the one who is jealous, he says, I will kill you. Now you see how that emotion of jealousy actually led him to plotting the murder of his brother. So the name of the one who's his sacrifice was accepted was Habil and the one who was rejected was Qabil. So Habil says to him, He said that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He accepts from those who are conscious of him. So I have no role to play in this. You see, today we see someone on social media perhaps they live next door to us or they were brought up with us we went to school with them we played in the same football pitches with them we did everything with them and today that person is wealthy that person has achieved allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a good spouse a good well uh, a, a good uh, business to the extent that his business grows and he becomes wealthy. Now we are looking at what, we, what he has. He has a beautiful car. I have nothing. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him? This is where jealousy comes from. You're actually questioning the choice and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet if you look at your own life, Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal gave you in so many ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you in ways that he has not blessed that person. But shaitan is drawing your attention to the fact that that person has more. And this is why the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, Unzuru ila man huwa dunakum. Look at those who have less than you. And don't look at those who have more than you. Why? Because when you look at someone who has less than you, naturally you feel grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm grateful that Allah gave me what I have. I have a car, he's riding a bicycle. He uh, if you have a bicycle, you look at the one who is less than you, the one who is walking. If you have two legs and you are walking, you look at the one who has no legs and cannot walk. So in this manner, you become more grateful. What social media has done is it has painted the pictures, the best parts of everybody else's life. And let me put this into perspective. When you go onto your account on Instagram or on Facebook, what do you do? Do you actually put the pictures of you and your spouse fighting? Do you put up those pictures? Do you put up videos of the arguments that happen within your home? No, you put up the best part of your life with them. So you take a picture when you are at the beach, perhaps, you know, uh, at times hugging each other, etc. Why? To display to other people that our life is hunky-dory, beautiful, lovely. We want people to admire our lives. The same is going on in everybody else's life. They put up the best pictures that they have for others to see the goodness. And naturally so, they want to paint a good picture of themselves. But we don't see that that person driving that Lamborghini or that Ferrari or that Bentley or is uh, flying in a private plane is overwhelmed with debt perhaps. We don't see the bad parts of their lives. We don't realize that they can't sleep at night. Every day they take pills to go to sleep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you less, but you sleep easy at night. You see, comparison, someone once told me that comparison 
is the thief of happiness. Comparison is the thief of happiness. And this is the cause of jealousy. When we compare what Allah gave us to what Allah gave them. We're not supposed to be doing this in the first place. You know, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Qad aflaha man aslam. The one who has accepted Islam, he has won. He has succeeded. وَرُزِقَ kafafa, And he has been given enough sustenance. وَقَنَّعَهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا آتَاهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him contentment with that which he has. Happiness, shukr. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me this meal that I have today. Alhamdulillah, I woke up in the morning. Alhamdulillah, I have a spouse. Alhamdulillah, I have so much in my life. Allah makes him content with that which he gives him. So he doesn't look at others and say, look at what he has. Or when he sees the bounty of others, he says, oh Allah, give him more. Oh Allah, give him more. Oh Allah, zidhu wa barik lahu fi malih. Oh Allah, grant him more and grant him barakah in that which he has. Knowing that when I make a dua for this person, one, shaitan runs away. He doesn't want to you, you to make that dua. So any feelings of jealousy that may creep into the heart are immediately removed. They are gone. Why? Because you made a beautiful dua for that brother or that sister. You see someone has a good uh, appearance on social media. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them good looks. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah. We ask Allah to bless them in that. And we leave it. We leave it. Why? Because that is not what Allah chose for you. Allah chose for you something else. Focus on that. And in this manner, you will become grateful. You see, this, this son of Adam, Qabil, who was jealous against his brother, he actually killed his brother. So, Habil then tells Qabil that if you are to extend your hand to kill me, I will not do so. I will not extend my hand to kill you. And the reason is, I fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. The one who is jealous has a problem with his iman, his faith, his belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he is questioning the decree of Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And this is why... Habil says to Qabil, I will not do so because I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he killed his brother. He killed his brother. And later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ النَّادِمِينَ مِنْ أَجْلِ ذَلِكَ and he became from amongst those who were remorseful of what he did. He regretted his actions. And this is the end of the person who is jealous. When he carries out an action against the one he has carried, he is jealous for or against, what he will do is if he has some sort of a heart, he becomes regretful, remorseful. Why did I do what I did? Imagine this person killed his own blood. The very same blood that ran through his veins. That was the blood of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. He killed his own brother. He took his own brother's life. Do you see the danger of jealousy? And this is what it does. It burns you in your heart. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells us, إِيَّاكُمْ hasad فَإِنَّ الْحَسَدَ يَأْكُلُ الْحَسَنَاتِ كَمَا تَأْكُلُ النَّارُ الْحَطَبَ That beware of jealousy. For indeed, jealousy eats away at the good deeds in the same way that fire eats away at wood. Have you seen how there is a fire that is being kindled and people keep bringing wood, adding it. Why? Because the fire is eating away at the fuel. In this manner, if you have done good deeds, salah, siyam, zakah, hajj, sadaqah, that hasad, that jealousy will not allow you 
to enjoy your life. It will burn away at the rest of the good deeds. And this brings us to a point. The actions of the heart are ignored a lot of the time. So we ignore the actions of the heart and we focus on the fact that we have to perform our salah. But the actions of the heart are equally important, if not more important than the actions that you do every day. If you are to come to your salah and you don't think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't concentrate on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then in reality, what you are doing is you are rendering a salah without a reward. Yes, perhaps you will not be punished. You will not be punished for having performed that salah because you did it for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you will get no reward from it. Why? Because you didn't think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You didn't bring him into your mind and heart. So there is no reward for you there. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَنْصَرِفُ مِنْ صَلَاتِهِ وَلَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْهُ إِلَّا نِصْفُهَا أو رُبُعُهَا أو تُسْعُهَا أو عُشْرُهَا That a man comes to his salah or he leaves his salah and he will benefit nothing from that salah except for half of it or a quarter of it or a ninth of it or a tenth of it only one tenth of your salah you get reward for why because you thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this so you see the benefit of the actions of the heart the actions of the heart the heart feels jealousy the heart feels sincerity the heart feels hatred the heart feels arrogance these things need to be worked upon in order for us to benefit as muslimin in order for us to benefit as those who believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know when it comes to jealousy it can actually lead us to doing absurd things and there is a joke that is told and i've you know tuned it such that it is perhaps more Islamic than it was before. But there is a profound lesson to be derived from it. They say there was a man who found the lamp, right? You know, the lamp that Aladdin has, the story from the fairy tale. So he rubs the lamp and the genie comes out of this lamp. And he says, look, I will grant you three wishes that if I can fulfill, I will do. So the man says, okay. That's good. But the genie says with one condition, whatever I give to you, your ex-wife will receive double of that. So he says, okay, that's fine. At least I'm getting something. So he asks for a million dollars. And the genie goes, wherever he gets it from, he brings that million dollars, gives it to him. But next to him, he gives his ex-wife two million dollars. So this man is looking at his million, but he sees... His ex-wife has got two. So now he's becoming angry, he's becoming agitated. So the next thing he thinks of, he says, I need a beautiful home. So the genie builds him up a beautiful home. And right next door to him, his ex-wife receives two homes. So now he's looking and he says, this is not possible, man. This is too much for me to take. My ex-wife has double of what I have. This is a problem. And plus, it's not his wife, it's his ex-wife. Some of us would actually hate it if our wives received double what we received. Allahu Akbar. But this is his ex-wife. And she's receiving more than him. So obviously, there's some problems there. So on the last one, he says, let me use my brains a bit. And he tells the genie, he says, you know, I need you to scare me. But only half to death. So... <laughs> Obviously, the genie will scare his wife completely to death and she will die, gone. So, <laughs> this man was jealous of what his wife had received, his ex-wife. So, he, it led him to asking the genie to scare him half to death so that his ex-wife would be completely destroyed and gone, died over. You see what jealousy can lead us to? It can lead us to looking at what others have, even if we have more than we need and more than we can imagine. This, in this case, he had a million dollars. He had a home, but he was not happy with it. Why? Because the person next to him had more than him. 
So it's important for us to focus on that which we have. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us of a man who is bankrupt. He asked the Sahaba radiallahu anhum in fact, Atadruna mani al-muflis? Do you know who is a bankrupt person? So they said, Al-muflisu fina malla dirham lahu indahu wala mata'a. The bankrupt person from amongst us is the one who has no dirhams. He has no gold coins and he has no goods as well. Such a person is bankrupt. Why? No money to put in his pocket and no goods to sell as well. So he is bankrupt. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-muflisu min ummati man ya'ti yawm al-qiyamah bi salatin wa sadaqatin wa siyamin wa qad shatama hadha wa qadhafa hadha wa akala maala hadha wa safaka dama hadha The one who is a bankrupt person from amongst my ummah is he who comes on the day of Qiyamah and he has a lot of sadaqah, he has a lot of salah, he has a lot of zakah, but he has killed this person and he has taken the wealth of another person and he's accused another of doing something bad. So that is a bankrupt person. Why? So it will be taken or So it will be taken from his good deeds and given to that person and the one that he has wronged. Then it will be taken from his good deeds and given to the next person and the third person and the fourth person until he has no good deeds left. فَإِنْ فَنِيَتْ حَسَنَاتُهُ أُخِذَ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِهِ ثُمَّ طُورِحَتْ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ طُورِحَ فِي النَّارِ And when there are no good deeds left, then this person's bad deeds, the one whom he has wronged, the bad deeds will be taken and placed on his scale. And he will be burdened by them until he falls into the fire. Until he falls into the fire. This is a person with salah, with sadaqah, with siyam, with hajj. All of these things. He's done them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes expecting good reward from Allah. But he didn't have a good tongue. So he swore at another person. And he shouted at the other. And he killed another. And he did X, Y and Z. He did so many wrong things against others that he was a bankrupt person. So this can emanate from jealousy within the heart, hatred within the heart, ill feeling within the heart. If we don't pay attention to this, when we feel these emotions, they have real repercussions in our lives. They cause real problems in our lives. We need to remove them, take them out of the heart. And as a result, we will feel happier we will feel more content our lives will be more blissful for us so in this manner we will actually be able to enjoy our lives and become more content with that which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us one last hadith and we end off insha'allah abdullah ibn amr ibn al-as radiyallahu anhu was a sahabi who was sitting with the companions of the mess of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there. So he said, from this door, there will be a man who will enter upon you. And this man is from the people of Jannah. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, looking up, probably expected Uthman, Abu Bakr, Umar to walk in, one of the great companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they noticed it was, was a man that they did not really know. So he walked in just a normal man, someone whom they did not expect. In fact, he was carrying, it is said he was carrying his slippers under his arm. So they let it go. The next day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting with them again. The same man enters. He says, يَدْخُلُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ هَذَا الْبَابِ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ a man from the people of Jannah will enter upon you from this door. So they look and they see the same man. The third day, the same thing happens. And now Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he's thinking that what is this man? What does he do that is so special about him that he has already been given Jannah? So he goes to him and he says, look, 
I need to stay with you for three days. I've had a problem with my father and I'd like to stay with you for three days. <coughs> so he goes and he stays with this companion for three days and three nights. And every night he tries to notice, does this man wake up for tahajjud salah? Does he wake up to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is he reading the Quran at night, perhaps for hours on end? And nothing, he notices nothing, except that when the man turns over in his sleep, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, subhanallah. So at the end of three days, he says, you know, I want to ask you, this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. <coughs> this is what he said. And I'd like to ask you, what is it that you do that is so special that made you from the people of Jannah? So he says, you know, I haven't done anything special. Except perhaps when I go to sleep every night, I clean, <coughs> I clean my heart out from hatred and from jealousy. And I leave no enmity within my heart for my fellow believing brothers, except that I have removed it. <coughs> There's nothing. I'm clean and I sleep with this. So Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As actually says to him, you know, I think this is what? is the quality that will enter you into Jannah. We think it is easy to do. We think it is easy to remove jealousy, to remove hatred, to remove arrogance from the heart. But it's not as easy when you actually try to practice upon it. Think of your worst enemy. Think of the person that's really caused you problems in your life today. And ask yourself, when you go to sleep today, are you able to let go of that hatred? Are you able to forgive him? Are you able to make a good dua for that person? Oh Allah, guide him. Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, grant him goodness. If you can do this, then know that you will be granted <coughs> that which the Sahabi was granted, which is Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand.